Welcome back to the First Cup Podcast. And we are at that point, Mark, where now just four times a year, we get all the boys together, the PGA Tour guys, the Live guys. It makes these events even more special. And the Live crew is bringing a roster, a, a hearty one this time around. We've spoken a lot about John Rahm, but don't forget about Brooks Kepka, who won a major championship last year. Bryson DeChambeau is going to try to unlock the secrets of Augusta National alongside Phil Mickelson, Patrick. Reed, Cam Smith, on and on and on. This live versus PGA Tour uh, battle, so to speak, is seemingly heating up again here in Augusta. As you would expect, right? Uh, and I'm sure the, the Twitter is going to light up here pretty soon as well when all of the, the live butts start coming out of the woodwork again. Um, look, to me, it's the Masters. To me, because it is what it is, this event, I hope the live conversation kind of goes away and people just play golf for the fact that we're playing at the season's, season's first major at the Masters tournament because it just is so special. But sadly, we can't avert that sort of stuff. So it is what it is, in my opinion. As far as, you know, figuring out who's going to play well, the man in your picture, look, he just finds a way somehow. Um, Cam Smith, uh, you know, I'm not that sure about. The guy, if I do have my eye on someone from the Live League, is Joaquin Neiman just the way he's been playing. And you could sense that kind of desire in him. And and I've watched him play this golf course before the Augusta National. And, and he's got all of the elements that are required to play well around here. The only thing is, you know, when you get to Saturday evening and you're close to the lead, you can imagine the feel, the questions that are going to be uh, tossed at one and the questions that one has to field. So it's I just hope the conversation softens. I hope the golf... Um, gets the chance to be the, 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 get the front seat. And I really just hope that, you know, we have a fantastic event. And if you get a few live guys and a few PGA Tour guys mixing it up and battling it out, look, all the better for the game, right? So, uh, so look, roll on Masters Thursday next week and we'll just see what transpires. Yeah, it is interesting, Patrick, because I think uh, I know that at least in the last couple of, of uh, years or last couple of major championships, guys from both the PGA Tour and Live Golf have kind of said, hey, if I'm if I'm not going to win a major, I certainly want one of us to win it kind of starting to to put that line in the sands. But does that still exist? I mean, we are now in a world where there's a framework agreement between the PGA Tour and the PIF. Maybe that gets to the finish line. Maybe it doesn't. We've seen some of the sentiment soften uh, amongst uh, peers in recent months. And usually, and especially, the Masters has been kind of immune to some of the, the junk that gets thrown around. So is, is there even still a rivalry amongst the actual players, or is that just something that we're perpetuating? I think it's an us problem. Probably. I mean, the, the players who liked each other before the split still like each other for the most part. And the players who didn't like each other before the split probably don't like each other a little bit more than usual. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have a situation where Patrick Reed's throwing a tee at Rory McIlroy on, on the driving range or anything like that, because like Mark said, it is Augusta National. These guys tend to put the extracurriculars in the background. And even someone like Cam Smith last year, when he was wearing his Ripper GC proud fan here, uh, all his gear, he said, hey, if a green jacket comes up to me and told me, take it off, I brought a I brought a completely different set of clothes in case that happens. So everyone knows there's one thing that matters this week, and it's the Masters. The rest of it is noise. Let's just play golf. Uh, you know, give the golf fans a really good week with all the big boys uh, intact. In so uh, yeah, I think it's it's more of an us problem, but I love it. I love all the drama. What do we have to do, KP, to get that sentiment? The sentiment that. Obviously, the golf is bigger. Obviously, this event is bigger. Cam Smith doubling up on baggage fees so that he can bring non-Ripper GC logo clothes just in case. How do we get that sentiment like across the world of golf and not just a couple of times a year? I don't know. Put us on TV more often so that we can <laughs> so that we can talk about it. I think. Look, I I think you know if you watch. I think if you if you only and, and here I think this is the problem you're getting at, Rick, is if you only watch the majors and maybe you watch the full swing show on Netflix and you kind of pay attention throughout the year, but you're not really like in it every day like we are, like, oh, this this PGA tour live thing, this is you know, there there was some rhetoric on full swing where you're like, 
I don't think that's how it went. Like that, that's revisionist <laughs> history, right? And I think what's really sort of funny and, and really interesting is the biggest dogs on live, they don't care at all about any of this, right? Brooks, Rom, they, they don't care about live. Like they just went where the money is and that's where they're playing. DJ, at Phil, maybe, but you know, Phil's 50, whatever, 53 years old. So I just, I think if the, if the big dogs on that tour, like were more uh, adamant about, remember when Greg Norman said they were going to like carry, carry the winner off the green. Like he was, you know, like he was Newt Rockney and it was like 1950s <laughs> Notre Dame or something like that. That was, that was absurd. Brooks, Brooks Koepke is not doing that. Right. And so I, I just think those guys set the tone for the world of golf. And, and if they're not talking about it, then it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. The live guys are going to play in Miami this week. That's going to be their lead into the masters. And Mark, we did see, you know, a couple surprises last year. Uh, Patrick Reed without much form uh, played well. Phil Mickelson out of nowhere finishes T2. This, this is a golf course. We've talked about it a little bit already. Experience matters and you can conjure up a little bit of magic and get yourself around here, even without coming in in the greatest set of form. Yeah, well, look, Phil Mickelson is the case study for that observation, right? Because uh, in years past at previous Masters, he's come in here with no form. And then all of a sudden, something about him, he gets in the car and drives down Magnolia Lane. And his soul is awakened and the guy just starts to do Phil stuff. And the next thing he's contending Sunday. But that's what you see. It's, we've talked about it to your point. When the champions, the former winners get to the grounds and they go and spend some time in the champions locker room and they uh, and they mix it up with their friends and the green jackets and stuff like that. It just wakens a little something up in oneself. And there's also that little element of horses for courses. I know it sounds trite, but it's true um, because the Augusta National Golf Club, it, it rewards a ball that doesn't miss down the left hand side. It rewards really quality iron play in terms of distance control and trajectory movement. It rewards a deft touch around the greens and then certainly rewards the gumption, I guess the moxie to be able to stand over, stand over a five or six foot putt when it counts and hit that thing at the right speed and make it. And so the guys that have won there before, they know what that feels like because you heard Ram talking about how he's nervous, uh, Kyle's observation. You know, when you're over there and every shot you're playing is on the knife edge, you're riddled with nerves and emotion and stuff. So when they've been there, they cannot necessarily handle the nerves better, but they've dealt with the nerves. So that means they have the leg up on the folks that haven't been there. Because again, I was alongside Trevor for the Masters victory in 08. And Saturday night, man, he was, he was an antsy boy. And Sunday morning, he was a nervous puppy. And thankfully, had the moxie to pull it off. But that's where they have the leg up. So you can expect the, the Reeds, the Mickelsons, and that sort of crowd, Dustin Johnson even, to, to probably be a factor despite what they're doing leading into the event.